Do not say, there is yet four months. And then comes the harvest, lift up your eyes. The faith of God talks to obedient, yielded sons and daughters and says, you're not the underdog. You're not the doormat of the planet. You're not looking out here to see where your provision is. Lift up the eyes of the faith and see for the fields are white. They're ready for harvest. The Apostle Paul, in speaking to the Corinthian church in chapter 14, clarifies methods of utterance or ways of expression. This is how we communicate when we're talking. We can't understand the Lord when we're not talking. We can understand one another sometimes without talking. Some of you mothers and fathers, you know exactly how to get your kids to understand you without saying a word. It's just that, you know, and if they don't understand, they'll find out later on that actions speak louder than looks. <laughs> but when we're, when we're conveying in public, and the Apostle Paul takes the entire um, New Testament, really, but the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians to talk about the edifying, you know, when you speak in in an unknown tongue, you edify yourself, you're speaking mysteries to God, uh, and on and on and on. And then he says, I, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. How many of you speak in tongues? Yes. And, and so this is wonderful. And he says, look, you can even bless in tongues, but you need to have an interpretation of that. You need to explain what's going on. You know, people are overwhelmed with the power of God. There's always someone visiting, and you might not understand completely what in the world's going on. It would be unfair to you as in, in a human being not to have an understanding that this is in the Word of God and this is a refreshing or uh, a revival that you need. Yes. Yes. So I talked uh, on the new man. Uh, when I taught on the new man, it said... Um, uh, the elders that rule well, or the presbyters that lead, or the uh, ep uh, episcopate, or bishops, or ministers that lead uh, the, the flock of God well, let their ministries be worthy of double honor. How many know that's, that's in the Word of God? Double honor, talking about giving, talking about generosity, talking about tithe, and talking about offerings. And then it goes on, especially those who minister in the word or labor. That word labor is the word work, like we looked at in the, in the Greek on, on the previous session. Who work, who toil, who, who, you know, actually hard work and dig into the living word of God. That's our vocation. That's what we're called to do. That's where our entire life is dedicated to. Now, there are people like that still living on earth. That, that their whole life is, is receiving from the Lord that which the body of Christ needs because they, woe is me, Paul said, if I preach not the gospel. So in other words, there are individuals still on earth. How many are glad that we're still on earth? That, that um, there is no alternative for us. In other words, for us, we can't just do anything and this because we owe it to God by virtue of his own divine calling upon our life to be able to stand before him in eternity and have him say, well done. Well done. say that out loud. Well done. So in other words, if, if I'm going to have the Lord say, well done, I've got to do what he told me to do. Yes. And so in this case where he says, an elder worthy of double honor, especially those that minister in the word and doctrine. In the word and doctrine. And I'm only going over it today because I was asked some questions by some very uh, astute students after the meeting. And I wanted to show you out of the word of God. Now, brethren, if I come unto you 
speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? In other words, how is it going to benefit you? How many of us agree that unless you get the interpretation or I get the interpretation or, or God gives us, unless we know what in the world is being said, it normally is a prayer meeting and everyone there is a believer and we're praying according to the perfect will of God. We're praying together. That's okay, but that's a meeting. That's a meeting of believers and so uh, people that are not part of the Christian faith or don't know what we're doing are normally not in that setting. Isn't that true? Yes. So, what shall it profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation knowledge prophesying or doctrine this is first Corinthians 14 and uh, what verse is that? Six. All right. So if you notice here, speak to you is word. Yes. Yes. Well, let me rephrase that. Speak to you is words. Yes. Yes. And Paul said in the, in, 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 the, in the first and second chapter, which things we put into words. So the divine message of the Lord, the good news of the gospel is put into words. We don't have to wonder about that today because you could get the King James Version, you can get the Amplified Version, you could get the, the uh, other ones that I won't want to mention because I don't want to direct you in that direction. But how many understand what I'm talking about? You, you can receive in today's modern language the same word in different words. And if it is a good translation faithful to the original language, then it will convey to us the thought effectively. And sometimes one way of grammar may not be as easily grasped, so you can look at another expression in a faithful translation, and you put the two verses or chapters together and you can grasp more. Now, if you're able to speak more than one or read more than one, language and or have some Bible helps? How many think that helps you understand the thought better? Yes. We certainly do not want to be the people that take one verse out of context and interpret some kind of a, a vague conclusion based on an out of context word and run around saying, well, that's what Jesus said when it's really, that's what you said Jesus said because you took Jesus out of context. And, and so the Apostle Paul here says, except we speak. So that means words. We're putting things into words. And we're speaking that for the sake of your profiting or your edification. Today, there was an inspiration for me to give a prophetic word. I'm aware of a very important fact that that prophetic word has in it edificational, exhortation, ex exhortational, and comforting capability. It has capability. It's not guaranteed to do that because there will always be a people that despise prophesying and therefore doubt what they're called to believe. But the capability is there for people like you wild people, God people, believing people, supernatural people, I am I people. For you to, to grab a hold of that and grab a hold of the, the spirit of God or the inspiration of God within those words. So that's the word also being spoken. So the apostle Paul said, except we speak to you, and he mentioned prophesying. Then in that prophesying, I remember, I recall, a firewall 
of protection around the people of, of the Lord. The people that will not allow their faith to hang down, but will lift up the shield of faith according to what Paul said to the Ephesians and, and quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. How many believe that that prophetic word is consistent with the word of God? And so we see here that there are some things that have to do with the word and some things that have to do with doctrine or teaching. In this chapter, the Apostle Paul is clarifying the difference um, it, or regulating the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Like worship and praise today. You guys hit it out of the whatever. And, uh, and we're, we, we may not be finished. After we, we uh, do what we need to do, we may come back and, and worship the Lord in, 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 in uh, making a joyful noise or whatever the case might be. Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you? Except I speak. How many believe speaking in a church assembly by a ministry gift is speaking the word? Yes. So, so here's what Paul says, here's how I'm going to minister to you. I'm going to speak in a language you understand so that it would edify you, build you, and profit you. But here's what, how I'm going to do it. There's going to be streams. Hit someone and say streams. And so those streams of communication will be by revelation. So I'll have revelation of the Word of God and relay the Word of God to you in revelation. One word or one verse might jump out and make the whole day. That will be a revelation imparted to you. That will be the Word for you. And how many of us have experienced that listening to the Word of God and something jumped out? We have to... Fortunately, either take a note, rewind it, or remember it, or talk to somebody that felt the same thing. Yes. Except I speak to you by revelation, or by knowledge, by prophesying. Now again, we see the pr prediction and also the springing forth. Because prophesying comes from the Hebrew word naba, which means to spring up or nabi, which means prophet, or to predict. So it has in it more, more than not an inspired way to testify and tell of the goodness of God. And it can move people emotionally, but it can move people deeply within their spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it can move you also. Yeah. And it moves you when you pray to the Lord and you talk to the Lord in your private chamber. And you might talk to the Lord first, out of your intellect or out of your cares or out of your concerns, but you get into a realm when you speak to the Lord out of your spirit, the next thing you know, what comes out of your mouth gets all over your being, and it's not emotionalism, you're literally wearing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is coming upon you. You're literally wearing the outpouring of the river out of his belly or her belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit with glory be to God. And, 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 and when, you, when you say that he, he took our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed and you say Lord I know that by your stripes I was healed and if I was healed then I am healed and even if symptoms say I am not I believe I am and you begin to thank the Lord for what he has done and all of a sudden you're wearing your miracle in your body All of a sudden, something that you already said last year or last month or last week or whatever becomes not something you left behind you, but someone you're wearing today. Glory to God. Glory to God. You, your, your breakthrough, your wait is over, your harvest is at hand. 
all of a sudden the Spirit of God has affected your perception and the Lord taught you something called the faith doctrine and I said that the other night in most original languages it does not say faith it says the faith the faith because the faith of God was introduced fully into the earth when the Lord Jesus stepped out publicly after baptism and started demonstrating the will of God through ministry. Glory be to God. I'm going to stop till somebody gets a hold of what I'm talking about. The faith. The faith. See, don't wait to get something out of this. The spirit of revelation is flowing. And here's the doctrine of God. The Lord says uh, to us when we bring food to him while he was talking to the woman at, at, the, at the Jacob's well and we brought food and said, Master, eat. And we, didn't, we had no idea why he's talking to the Samaritan woman. Glory to God. But the first thing he did was say, give me the drink. Amen. Glory to God. When, when these two races or groups of people don't have anything to do in common. And she said, man, you're a Jew. And she didn't say man, but I said, and I, I'm, I'm a Samaritan. And we have no dealings one with another. And then the Lord starts telling her the doctrine of God. If you know who's talking to you. If you knew what, where, how near your provision is. If you knew what I can give you. And you know the story. And she said, well, hold up. The, the well is deep. And you have, no, you have nothing to draw with. And this is the well our father Jacob gave us. And we've been drinking out of it, and our ancestors drank out of it, and their, their cattle, and, 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 and uh, you know, their, you know their, their sheep, their cows, their bullocks, their whatever, heifers. <laughs> been drinking out of it. Are you greater than our father Jacob? How many know the answer to that? What is it? Yes. So the Lord tells her, you know, after the Lord tells her all about herself, she leaves everything and runs to get, to, to get people to come to the apostolic women. She said, she said, she said, the Lord is having a meeting and I'm going to go get stacked. Are you, are you? Dr. Robin is having a supernatural Jesus meeting. And women want to be captains and men want to be captains by bringing women. There is a manpower movement going on. Now, now I want you to hear me, please. I, I, want, I want the people that have been with me the longest to listen to this. Christ revealed the doctrine of the faith in this next verse. I have food that you know not of. And they, we say to him, who made him food? He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Do not say there is yet four months. And then comes the harvest. Lift up your eyes. The faith of God talks to obedient, yielded sons and daughters and says, you're not the underdog. You're not the doormat of the planet. You're not looking out here to see where your provision is. Lift up the eyes of the faith and see for the fields are white. They're ready for harvest. And I'm going to send you to reap wages. And you're going to step into arenas that others have labored. But you're going to step into them. Others have done the work, but you're going to step into them. Others have done the toil, but you're going to step into them. Hey, the wait is over. The time is at hand. The victory is won.
And so if you notice, what the Lord is, to, is inspiring us to do is to lift up the eyes of our heart. How? By getting a hold of the presence of the Holy Spirit and His enablement so we could look up and see beyond the visible and see fields that are white and ready for harvest instead of what the world tells you. If you live off of what the circumstances tell you, you are a servant, a slave to the circumstance. And you will be that way as long as you look at what the circumstance tells you is happening. You will stay enslaved to the circumstance. Thank God for people like us that can come in the lives of weaker people and help them. Thank God that the Samaritan woman would have just stayed that way, except that Jesus was able to say, look, I'm not going to hold it against you. You've had five husbands. You've been through all kinds of stuff. But I'm telling you, I got some water that never, you never get thirsty when you, when you get a hold of this, you may give it, you never get thirsty. You, you notice that? He says, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white. Well, what eyes is he talking about other than the eyes of the faith and the expectation? Because now the faith, now fa faith is the spirit. Hit someone say a spirit. spirit. Now, uh, you, you understand, faith came through a person. Faith was revealed in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ first and foremost. Yes, mighty men of God and women of God throughout the pages of the ancient scriptures we call the Old Covenant pleased God by faith. They got that faith by hearing. And so they had personal visitation. They had the appearance of God. They had the oral covenant like Abraham and his seed or they had some kind of a relationship like Enoch did. Are you going to stay standing? <laughs> Having done all to stand? All right. Uh, isn't that true, guys? So, like, we don't know much about the ministry of Enoch. We have his life spelled out in a few portions in the Old Covenant. We have him um, um, referred to by one of the writers of the New Testament. And then we have him mentioned in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. So that communication with God could have been revelatorily. He, he certainly... Uh, didn't have any writing so f faith couldn't come by r by reading the word of God maybe he had some notes from Adam or whatever I don't know I don't know how many understand can we think and still plan to go to heaven you know I'm not I'm not I'm not throwing anything away. You know, maybe, maybe Adam drew a picture. A tree, two people, fig leaves, a fruit. I don't know. Well, I know it. Dr. Robin, come on. Give a shout to Dr. Robin and the team today. But Enoch developed a relationship with God that is, that is very profound in the sense that he bypassed death. He was caught up. He walked with God 365 years. And uh, he was not for God took him. And the Bible says because he had this testimony, this, this, this impartation from the Lord that enabled him to say, I please God. So now we go to our scriptures and it, it tells us we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and that is why I have spoken. Would you agree that that is the believing we do in our heart and the confessing we do in our mouth? Yes. Would you believe that that is speaking the word of God and believing the word of God? Yes. Well, he calls it the spirit of faith. So there must be an ability in God through His grace for you to have an unbroken connection with your born of God nature and allow the spirit of the faith to inspire how you look at the fields. 
So you can go ahead and look at the fields and have an argument and say, but Dr. Harfouche, look at the fields. They don't look white. They don't look like they're ready for harvest. Look at what's going on in the world. Look at what the reports are saying. Look at what my neighbors are doing. Look at what my mother-in-law said. I don't know. And you live, you're tempted to live your life in between. You're in between churches. You're in the desert experience. You're, 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 you're trying to get over this. You want a clean bill of health so you can get a new job. When you get a new job, then you're going to pay your tithe. But, and so you're always in between. And God said, no, your problem is not your location. Your problem is not your location. Lift up your eyes. Look at the fields. Look at the fields. Some people under the sound of my voice today are going to be lifted by God to a level of increased provision, health, and goodness. Glory to God. The Lord did not start you off to leave you. You're about to really hit some divine momentum. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah, yeah, you're going to hit some momentum. You're going to hit some momentum. Your victory is not going to come in 20, uh, 20 whatever. Your victory is here right now. Your victory is in you. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Come here, Isaiah. Come here. Glory to God. Your victory is here right now. The Lord has need of you right now. The fire of God's on your life right now. Glory. 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 I think I'm talking to you today. I believe the Lord's talking to you today. And so what happens is the spirit of faith I believed. Well, where did I get that faith from? Well, it's the gift of God. Lest any man should boast. So, so now, am I called to covet or desire the best gifts? Yes. What's the best gift? No, no, no. That, that is fruit. You're right though. That's fruit. But love is the agape love of God in our heart. That's, that's the great. But really he's talking about covet that you may prophesy. So do you understand what I'm saying? So prophecy comes out of love anyway. Okay, so the love of God is what caused God or what made God, you know, anyway, nothing made God. God made everything. Amen. I just don't want to be taken out of context because some of you know how to edit. Uh, I'm going to edit you if you don't mess, mess around. You mess around with honesty, I'm going to edit you. You may be seated, please. Let me, let, me, uh, let me put the brakes on a little bit about that because I want you to receive. I actually do not want you to finish our gathering, our visit, our time together the same way you, you came. Honestly, don't want that to happen. So I want to do my best so that the, the, the I would... would be faithful to the Lord, right? Yes. Smart water. That's, that's what it is. And so he says, but rather that you may prophesy, because in prophesying or in inspired utterance, there is the edification, exhortation, and comfort. And if you don't have that, then you, you have the message in tongues and the interpretation of tongues. And in the prophesying, there's also the preaching. Do you see what I mean? Well, where does that come from? 
Well, according to the New Testament, comes by the Spirit of God. So faith is a spirit. Now, not having agreed on that, we having the what? The same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and that is why I have spoken. We also believe, and that is why we speak. Well, first of all, I couldn't believe unless I heard. I had to be exposed to the message. I had to be exposed to the person. Uh, I had to run into the Lord. I, the Lord had to run into me. He had to teach me. There had to be something because the level of my believing is equivalent with the level of the revelation that God has given me and, and the revelation he has given you. And that revelation is in um, the word of the living God. How many are following? So when it says in the last days, people will give heed to doctrines of devils, devils and, uh, and, um, it's, and, but it's talking about they will not tolerate sound doctrine, but then believers give heed to the doctrine of the Lord. Notice it's the doctrine singular. And in the doctrine of the Lord, there is a communication in words, a communication in revelation, a communication in prophecy, a communication in, in knowledge, and a communication in doctrine. Those are words that convey the word. Okay? Are you following? Okay. And so, first I have to hear, and then I have to... I have to accept, and the first thing I accept is I accept his gift of giving me a birth from above. Yes. Yes. So then I have to become a new creation, yes. otherwise I'm not compatible to the one who's calling me. Yes. I have to be born into compatibility, yes. at least into pliability, yes. so he can work on me. And we all, regardless of our best efforts, without him, are not pliable to him. We may be obedient here and there, and God can use people that don't have a relationship with him to do what's right. But on the internal side, he wants to um, uh, get an invitation so he can move in and make pliability and then compatibility. Pliability starts molding us, and then the Word of God teaches us how to be compatible with God or be able to get along with God and understand what He has supplied through uh, the person of His Word. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Now, I'm not teaching my Word yet. I'm just talking to you about tithing offerings. <laughs> but I want to be clear. There are many voices in the world. There are many views in the world. There are many sounds in the world. The Apostle Paul is clear about that. But then he says, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound. Notice he calls it the trumpet. The implication is that it's the official trumpet that is supposed to be heard by the soldiers and then have them rally to the sound of that trumpet that is sounding one particular sound to gather yourself for the battle. Well, the trumpet of the Christian is the living Word of God Himself. Our Savior, glory to God. Hallelujah. Did not give us the spirits of faith. He gave us the spirit of the faith. My God. And so I believe and that is why I have spoken. We also believe and that is why we speak. So the first thing I hear is that the Lord paid it all. He died and rose again for me. I find out Galatians 2 and 20 says it clearly. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, lest I live. Yet not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the body or in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I hear that, and I look at that and say, well, if the Lord did that to the Apostle Paul, what did the Apostle Paul do? And then you find out what he did, and you find out that he had to accept the Lord. You find out that he had to... Uh, he was baptized. You find out that he called upon the name of the Lord. You find out that his sins were washed away. 
and you find out that he was filled with the Holy Ghost. How many have had that happen to you already? Shout. All right. So, so now, and you said, what does that have to do with the tithe and offering? Lift up your eyes. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work, Jesus said. Your meat, your food, your nourishment, your supply, your strength, your, your long years, your divine health, your divine healing, your breakthroughs, your release of settlements, your restoration in your family, anything that you might look out here and see that it needs repair, Everything there is supplied when you lift up the eyes of the faith and see that the fields are white, they're ready for harvest, and you step into the fields with boldness and with courage. Glory be to God. Now, how many of us, you know doctor for uh, a few years here? Anybody? Now guys, look, nobody wants the Lord to come back even so quickly more than I do. You know what I mean by that? I want the Lord to come quickly. See, I I could tell you don't agree with me on that. (laughs) See, some of you are thinking, no, you don't. I I wanted the Lord to come before church today. It's that American competitive spirit, bless God. Just remember the person with the football is the target. You understand what I'm saying. The Lord is, uh, the signs of the last of the last days are very clear. Everybody sees that. Everybody knows that. But the Lord never said, look down. Never said, look down. He never said the harvest is not available. He never changed the doctrine. And so, so I want to pose to you a supposition. What if Jesus doesn't come back for a hundred years? Will you let the Lord live in you and through you? Will you let his energy, his vitality, his health, his provision, despite what's going on, what if a thousand are falling over here and 10,000 at your right hand? What if you're supposed to stand and know that it shall not come near you? Only with your eyes will you look and behold the reward of the wicked. It does not matter where your geography is. It does not matter what's going on in your life. The last 10 years, 10 years ago, in the middle of the most horrifying attacks against the Christian community in the Middle East, when ISIS was slaughtering Christians by the droves, God sent this ministry. God put the books on the ground. God sent us to where we were not supposed to go because if God be for us, who can be against us? And in this decade, we're running like we're never going to run before. And my children will not look down. They will look up. Now, please hear me. I ne- Don't go out of here or even now. Say, doctor said... Jesus may not come for the next hundred years. You liar. I never said that. I did say though that if Jesus delayed and you have a point that you will quit believing God at because of delay, then the Lord wants you to know he's the God of a hundred years from now as he's the God of today. He's the God of a thousand years from now as he's the God of 2,000 years ago. Lift up your eyes. He's the healer of your economy. He's the healer of your body. He's the healer of your relationship. He's the deliverer of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. 
My God is going to visit you in the First Nations groups. My God is going to touch you in Eskimo lands. My God is going to reach you in the tribal nations of the world and the people, ethnic groups of the world. You're not forsaken. You're not going to bow down and yield to some kind of bondage and some kind of opposition that comes from the governments of this world or the agencies of greedy people. You're going to rise up and have a divine breakthrough expressing the good news of victory and the good news of the gospel in the land of the living. My God will rescue you. My God will fill your ship. My God will take care of you. My God, my God, my God, my God will take care of you. My God will take care of you. Excuse me. Excuse me. You may be seated. And you know, someone might say, well, Dr. Fush, I don't want to be here one day past uh, what I need to. Well, I don't either. <laughs> but what are you going to do about it? Grab a rope? <laughs> what are you going to do? When Jesus comes back, is he going to find you hiding? Or is he going to find you occupying? Thank you, Lord. Well, I sure love you. I love you. I really love you. Lift up your eyes, for the fields are white. They're ready for harvest. I'm, I'm going to have you look there, please, the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John. Because as I'm ministering this, I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing some things. Faith, or the faith, say the faith. The faith we have, the believer's faith, the church's faith, the faith of the Lord that is given to us, hinges around our agreement with superior report. The superior report of the Lord is greater than any other report. You know, like you know the songs, we will believe the report of the Lord. How many understand that? Yes. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the sacred scriptures. Yes. Sirs, I believe God that it shall be unto me as it was shown me. That's the scriptures, right? So we, we stand in that and his report in our life eclipses anything that is contradictory. Before this meeting is over, and I'll follow the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray specifically for the needs of many citizens of this planet. And, uh, you know, that applies to you. But there, I, I, can, I can predict this ahead of time because uh, the, the Lord dealt with me about this to agree with you around it. And, and I know you're people of the Word of God. I know you're people of stability. And the best of your ability, you've done the best. 
How many have done your best? And you're doing pretty good. But I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to minister at the end. We'll pray for you and bless your family, your household, your, your house group, your church that's part of this ministry. And we'll bless you. But I'm going to uh, sign off later. I'm going to lay hands on you. And certain things that have been a limiter of imposition uh, from, from, from uh, short shorting it on the gift of faith because you can wear the gift of faith. Would you, would you like to wear the gift of faith? Yes. Sure. It says put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> He's the author and the finisher of faith. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. You can wear the gift of faith if you remember what the Lord told us. And, uh, and look at this with me. In the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John, do you love the Lord today? Yes. And it's when the disciples brought food to the Lord. Uh, the meanwhile, the disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. That's in verse 31. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Has any man brought him anything to eat or ought to eat? Jesus says unto them, My meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me, and finish his work. Now, 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 look at me a moment. Do you notice here that uh, he's given allegorically also? He's giving, he's given specifically, but he's given allegorically. Meaning, meaning in allegory, food is supposed to keep you going. Food is, food is supposed to keep you alive. Food is uh, supposed to minister to you. Do you see what I mean? So if, if, you, if you need supply... Well, food is one of the two things. Uh, the other thing is raiment. It's just clothes. Right? Yeah. Amen. How many, how many, you know, know that you need both? Yeah. Unless you're going to eat alone or something. <laughs> Not trying to, I'm just trying to talk to you. So what he's, say, he's, he's saying, my food, what keeps me going, what, it, what never runs out in my life, why I can, why I have, why I, you want to know why I have what I have in the tank? Yes. That's what he's saying. You want to know why I have what I have? You want to know why I'm peculiar and distinct and different? Well, I brought from heaven. I brought from heaven the new man. I put on the new man. I put on the, 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 I put on the seed of Abraham. I put on the seed of Abraham. I didn't put on the nature of angels. Hallelujah. I became flesh so you could see what flesh is called to become. I'm going to give you my mind so you could have the mind of Christ. I'm going to give you my word so you can believe and speak. I'm going to give you my vision so you can be compatible and pliable with me. You understand allegorically speaking, he's not talking about the lunch they're bringing only. It's an opportunity for Christ to preach to us about life. My, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work. In other words, this is not just one meal. This is a continual supply of God until you finish. That's doctrine. It is against your Christianity for you to live like a beggar. If you're serving the living God, he will take care of your life long. You're going to run all the way to the finish line. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Shout hallelujah three times. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, 
I'm going to go, since, since I am following the prophetic spirit, the spirit of God, in my utterance today, <laughs> I'm going to go to my favorite verse, Galatians 2.20. You know it. Go ahead and recite it. I am... The faith. All right. If we look at that verse and we look at Ephesians and he raised us up together. Remember we talked about being children, being born to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So this is where as Galileans, how many know we spoke the language of the Lord and in Aramaic from the earliest days of Christianity, we were we were bnei kiomo. We were bnei, children, kiomo of the resurrection. Remember what Jesus said in the Aramaic language to the young 12-year-old uh, daughter of Jairus? Talitha, kumi or kum. Kumi or kum is rise. Kiomo is resurrection. Now, I want you to hit someone and say, there's something in that. Because Christ did not only rise from the dead. Christ rose to die no more. He didn't just rise from the dead. He rose to die no more. So when nevertheless I live. Goes together with and he that liveth. And believeth in me. Shall never die. And you say where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. We're right there. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work. Why? Because I am born unto life and will never die. And if this body or this tabernacle be dissolved, you absent from the body is present with the Lord and then there is a resurrection of the physical body that we all await. But until then, the meal we have, the provision of the table we have, is not just one lunch or one breakfast or one dinner. My food, lifelong, is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work. I run off of this. This is not a part-time life. This is a redeemed nature. This is a born of God character. This is a mind of Christ action. Glory be to God. Nevertheless, I live to die no more. Nevertheless, I live yet not I. But the one that dies no more lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh. The food of God, the provision of heaven, the spirit of the almighty, the redeemer, the comforter, the friend, the brother. Glory. Get in business with Jesus. He'll fund your life. He'll take care of your family. He'll deliver your obstinate relatives. He'll set your life on fire by the power of his spirit. So anyway, do you have a moment? Did you get anything out of that? Yes. So, sons of the resurrection, Bnei Kiyomo, children of the resurrection, was something we spoke early on in the language of the Lord. And the reason was, we knew we were born of God to die no more because we saw the Lord raised. And um, hallelujah. And in him we, we understood who? That's what I'm talking about. I feel like that right now. I feel like that right now. And so 
So listen, the life lives in me. The life lives in you. Come on, child of God. There is not a devil in this world that deserves your attention enough for you to doubt your God. Come on. Come on. I don't care what the I don't care what darkness is saying. The light of God has made your life his house. You're raised together to die no more. When you leave here, you take off into the presence. Absent is present. Absent is present. But if he delays a hundred years, it's not a hundred years of, uh, uh, of abstaining. It's a hundred years of participating. It's a hundred years of healing and delivering and preaching and decreeing and standing and winning in God for righteousness and holiness and sanctification and redemption. Glory be to God. So if that's the truth for me and you, shouldn't we learn that little That little thing the Lord is saying, let me grab a hold of your inner man. Let me help you see things the right way. Remember the Lord said, the Lord said the light of the body is the eye. Now I don't have time to go there, but how many know that's a direct quote? Why didn't he say the eyes? He said, the light of the body is the eye. If your eye is single, your whole, shout it, shout it. If your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. What light? What light? Diet light? Is it the, is it the God light? So if your, eye is, 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 if your eye is healthy, if you perceive the truth, then you see beyond the, the veil. You see beyond this natural impostering world. And you see what the Lord has already ripped into. He ripped the veil into so that you and I could walk into right into heaven's provision. And right, right with heaven's accompaniment into our world. Hallelujah. Visit your house. Visit your family. Visit your relatives. Visit your world with the power of the living God. I'm, and, that, and that's called revelation. I'm talking to you about how many could see pictures unfolding that way revelatorily. Yes. So the light of the body is the eye. Yeah. So he's saying, if I can get you to see it according to the mind of Christ, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Then the truth will fill you. Yeah. Yeah. The truth will fill you. It's not, and, and see, child of God, you're full of God. How many of you are full of the Holy Spirit? You're full of God. Everything that is being launched at you at a thousand miles an hour from every kind of avenue and every kind of so-called ingenious realm of technology to, to impostering, to lies, to rumors. Everything is trying to get you to suppress the true gift that's on the inside of you. But stir up the gift of God that's in you and let the power of the living God rise up in you. Your contracts are coming in. Your promotions are coming in. Your clean bill of health is coming in. Your symptoms are leaving. Your health is manifesting. Your blessing is transpiring. My God is going to manifest in this end time generation. The difference between the counterfeit and the real. You are more than a conqueror through Christ which strengthens you. Not merely a conqueror, not a hopeful fighter. You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. That's what the word of God himself tells us to believe. Child of God, stay on your feet a moment. I don't want to embarrass anybody, so I'm not going to do it because it's not an embarrassment. You tell the truth. You tell the truth. Every single one of us here 
has an idea that implies that if the Lord Jesus appeared right there next to you bodily and held your hand everything will be fine the doctrine of the Lord says he did you one better than that he is standing on the inside let, let, let me let, let me see we don't really know how to believe it because listen there's a difference between a clean slate when you when you're a little child and you're a clean slate you haven't been taught anything against anything you just learn and you grow up and you accept it but if you've been taught all your life by different v various views of opinion you're going to have a hard time you're going to have to listen to what Jesus said and he said and I will send him I will send the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not because the eyes <laughs> neither knoweth him because it but you know him for he is with you oh he was with us he was holding our hands he was blessing our lunch he was breaking the bread he was he, he was telling us to catch the net in he was with us he is with you and shall be in you glory be to God so he's in you so the spirit of the faith living on the inside of you said it is all good Hallelujah. Breathe deeply. Don't hyperventilate. Don't be full of anxiety. Don't take anxious thought. Don't be fearful about anything. Don't think the world is in the hands of your adversary. Don't think your future is left up to whatever. My God, I'll take care of you. Somebody's going to run in this place today. Somebody's going to run in this place today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. believing the Lord today before before this prayer is is uh, released in the now there will be a creative ability from the Lord himself that will move in your body they will move in your organs move in your muscles move in your skeletal system move in your sinews and tissues it will repair your shoulder it will heal your hips it will heal your knees heal your lower back take away every stiffness every so called effect of the age and the time that you've spent on earth you're about to experience something if you let it happen to you you're about to experience what it's like to be raised to die no more spirit soul and body to claim be as your days are so shall your strength be be as your be as your day be as your days are be as your days are so shall your strength be I love you you may be seated excuse me because I was gonna I was going to differentiate between what I'm preaching, but it's not a, it's not a, it's not a subject matter, is it? No, we love the Lord. And so he said, the, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him because he's with you. Well, he was with us in the person of, of the Lord and shall be in you. He is in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so living in us so when we begin to speak you might start speaking to the Lord you might start speaking mysteries to God in your prayer language you might start speaking the Word of God in the form of quote and not feel anything but before long when you when you tap into where you're speaking from 
So if you're speaking from up here is one level, but if you let, if you start speaking from in here, it's another level. And when you tap into where you're speaking out of, then all of a sudden that which is coming out through you becomes who you're wearing. And all of a sudden symptoms leave your life and the doctors wonder what in the world happened. And all of a sudden the Lord has given you a new lease on life. And all of a sudden the Lord has preserved you. The Lord has raised you. Glory be to God. And, and, and that's the pattern. That's the pattern of the Lord. My meat, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That's the pattern. You need fuel to finish the journey. That's the pattern. You do not live off of natural bread alone. That's the pattern. Don't let this world rough you up. This is the pattern. If you've had a rough game or a rough fight or you got some bruises, get a little bit of ministry done to you. There'll be a healing done in your life. I'm going to stop for a minute. Don't let the world put on you something that continues to live with you for years after you've been through the circumstance. Come out of that furnace and don't smell like smoke. The Lord walks over to Jairus' house. He kicks out the mockers or, or the mourners. He goes in with Jairus, the wife, and, and uh, the mother, rather, and the, Peter, James, and John. And the Lord said, Talitha kumi. What does he say next? What does he say? So she's 12 years old. He, he raised her and he said, now feed her something. That's what God does with you. We minister to you the first time. If we catch you the first time. He raises you up. After that, we feed you. Why? Because you're going to run off of this for many years. You're, you're not going to stagger around this world. Glory be to God. You're not going to stagger without fuel in the tank and enablement to run the race set before you. You're going to eat the living word of God and participate in obedience to the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so God said, we, ra we raise him and we feed him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Can you be bear with me a little bit? You want me to pray for you? Who brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, my meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say ye not. He's given us the key. Don't say. Don't deduce. Don't, conv don't be convinced. There are yet four months. Don't be convinced. Don't have faith in delay. If you have faith in delay, you're looking at something other than the fields. You're looking with the senses, you're looking with the pupils of your eyes, not the pupils of the kingdom. It's funny on so many levels. Yeah, I'll tell you. It's like this, this guy. You, you got to hear this. It's, it's like this, this, this guy, he's a good man, and he lives in a particular neighborhood, and, and for years, maybe, you know, three, four years, every day he gets up in the morning, tries to go to work, or goes to work. There's, there's a neighbor across the street, and the neighbor is like ancient, like, you know, he's like, like very, very, you know, like he's in a, in a rocking chair on the porch and he's always like, maybe looks like he's sipping on lemonade or whatever and just constantly rocking and he's like ancient, but he, look, he looks like, wow, this, this man is like probably, how many understand this is longevity here, this a, a venerable neighbor. <clears throat> And 
if you feel a joke coming on, it's because you're perceptive. And so <clears throat> one day he's just like, he's saying, look, when I have time, I'm going to ask that man, what's the key to his, you know, longevity. I want to find out what in the world he's doing. Cause he looks like he's, you know, whatever. <clears throat> and uh, sure enough, one day he just said, sir, I don't want to bother you, but I live right over there. And every day when I get up in the morning, I see you. And I'm just so amazed when I leave, you're there. When I come back, you're there. And you're, you're, just, you're just, what is the secret to your health and longevity? And the man said, well, I smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. <laughs> I eat nothing but junk food. <clears throat> and... Um, and I never, ever exercise. <laughs> and the man said, that is amazing. How old are you? He said, 26. But it's harvest time. So if the world can do something similar like that to, to a person through hard times, what can God do in the life of a person through full payment made in full on your behalf? What can God do in your life? What will God do in your life? Will God take away your rocking chair? Will God take away your cane? Will God take away your walker? Will God take away your affliction? Will God take away the negative diagnosis? Will God give you a new lease on life? Will God strengthen you? Hey, will you run like you've never run? Will you praise like you've never praised? Will you preach like you've never preached? Will you stand like you've never stood before? Yes! Glory, 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 glory. Say not, there are yet four months, and then comes the harvest. Well, why, Lord? Why? Why? Why should I not say that? Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for there are white and ready to harvest. So the Lord reveals that in the faith, in faith, in God, in covenant, in connection with the Lord, identifying the now identifies his supreme rulership in the now and brings to you victory in the now whether action is taking place or whether it seems like nothing is happening you have everything you need to live victoriously in the time that you're living in because when you see the harvest then you see what's following do you have that do you have do you have it in your in your bible and he that reapeth receiveth wages Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And gather, gathers fruit unto life eternal. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you are what? 
entered into their labor. Every single one of us are privileged to be alive at a time when much of what the Lord has been doing and has done through wonderful family members of this great global family of believers, much of it was done and then left for us to step into it and participate in the harvest of it. You're living at the right time. You, no one here should ever give it a second thought and think that the time you're living in is not as good as another time. In the, you're living at the right time. It's, it's your time to experience what God has placed compound interest on. My God, it's, it's gonna, it, you're living at the time when it goes, it goes just like that. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know if that blessed you today, but that's what I got for you.